I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. It's been a week. It's been an entire week. It's been two weeks, it's, some would say. It's, it, would, it has been two weeks. Well, it's been less than two weeks, I suppose, because we did come out. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. We did come out a little bit late last time, but it's okay. Yes. Um, What was I going to say? I don't know. Other than it has been a week. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think this is one of those time periods where everyone can collectively agree this has been a week. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what's going on in your life, at this point, we have this shared, uh, this shared existence of, yeah, this has been a week. Mm-hmm. So I'm also um yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm lucky. I have. <laughs> we're we're both on. We're either on the same page or so drastically off the same page that I don't know what's going on. I don't know. <sighs> you, you go first. Okay. So, the week prior, um, mm-hmm. due to, to COVID and all that, the company shut down for a week. But in order to allow employees who had vacation time and wanted to use it, they had to, mm-hmm. they had to technically declare a layoff, which meant you could use your vacation time for the week and still get paid, or you could keep your vacation and use unemployment. But in order for people to be able to use unemployment and not vacation, they had to de- declare a layoff, which oh, fine. God. I understand how that works. So a news article came out um, – a week and a couple days after that happened, and I got yeah. back to work, and everyone was like, "Brandon, did you see? Oh, oh, oh my god!" Because they said the company's name and the exact number of employees that we had in a layoff, and it's like I had to like explain to them, like, "No, like, listen, they're talking about it in the past tense. That's for last week." But like, people <laughs> were freaking out because no one said anything about it, and then just a news article is like, "Wait, we got laid off." Yeah. Oh God. People were freaking the, out, and it's like, "No, the... that's no." We had been we were laid off stealthily and we're not getting paid anymore, but no one told us because they're they're crafty up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. That also might be skirting the the edge of legality. Oh, we get a lot of letters um saying how we're technically doing everything legally. We're doing the legal minimum. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. The well, that's capitalism. Mhm. Capitalism, by definition, is the legal minimum. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you do anything other than legal minimum, you're uh, you're hurting your bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally a fact. Mm-hmm. I hate it. <laughs> I hate the society in which we live. <laughs> That's the spirit. He said, he said while staring into the distance through his ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I... You just you're like, you know, you're like I hate the world uh, we live in. Well, with a giant smile and a thousand yard stare through your ceiling. <sighs> yeah, well, actually, I'm really looking at my I'm looking at my transformers up there because oh, that's such a even though it's a world a world of constant war. Mm-hmm. At the least, there's giant robots. Mm-hmm. I, I saw a post by somebody saying that we're like distinctly on the Star Trek timeline right now. I don't even know what that means. So around this time in the Star Trek universe, roughly, uh, Mad Max times happened oh, on Earth okay. because society destabilized, and then the the warp drive was made and all that stuff, and it was it attracted the Vulcans and yada yada yada. Uh, then bravely go yada blah 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 blah. Um, but. Someone someone was, like, very excited about it and talking about, like, oh, there's a chance that we could actually see Vulcans. <laughs> I don't know if they were being serious or being sarcastic. <laughs> Mainly because my sarcasm meter and my serious meter has been completely thrown in the trash can these past couple weeks. Yeah. 
uh, because I don't interact with basically anyone anymore. I, I kind of like the working every other day. Do I have to turn this thing? I think I might have to change my sensitivity a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I like working every other day um, because I got some like free face masks. I got mm. um, someone just brought me eggs from their chicken, but I was only half paying att attention when they said that because um, I asked some questions and then zoned out a little bit. So uh, they're either chicken eggs, turkey eggs, or duck eggs, or a blend of all three. Okay. Um, but I got free eggs, and I like me some eggs. Some snake eggs. Scrambled. Scr raccoon eggs. Raccoon eggs, yes, because raccoons are known for their leg egg laying skills. They are. They super are. Um, I just want to say for a second. Yes. That is the most Woodstock thing I've ever heard you say about your job. We had a peacock. Yeah? Yeah. There's a lot of Woodstocky well, stuff that happens. Like, people yeah, always I know, bring but... me eggs. Sometimes there's, like, a loose peacock. Now, for those who don't know, peacocks, not native. Not a native animal. Oh, no. No, they're super not endemic. Yeah. So you'll just hear... They also sound weird. So you'll hear, like, Skah! outside. You know, you'll be like, what the fuck? And then lean out the window, and there's just a peacock chilling right there. Yeah, I mean peacocks. Peacocks kind of own wherever they are. Yeah, they're that kind of bird. They're mouthy. They're the Karen of birds. The Karen of birds. Yeah. <laughs> are they breaking quarantine? I yeah. mean, also to, just because she listens, I have to point out Karen is a meme about a, a, a person <laughs> who has like, can I speak to your manager? Hair. I'm not talking about my mom. <laughs> Felt like one. I had to clarify a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. That actually killed me. I'm dead now. <laughs> All right, podcast over. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go play some magic. With your new Godzilla Coria. decks. Yeah, I I fucking love Akoria a lot. Um, I've done two sealed events already, and I've been playing Brawl with the the new Godzilla commanders, and I love it. Uh. I, I was playing with the red green, so Gruul, um, brawl deck using the Godzilla King of the Monsters, and I absolutely love that deck. Um, very fun. I there was a moment where I had like like fifteen cards on like monsters on the field, and uh, I I top deck of Destiny the card that I needed to win. Nice. And the person didn't realize it. And it was just like they were doing like all the math, and there that it was just like no, I win, I yeah. just won. <laughs> That's the best. It's the best when you like you top deck exactly what you need, and you know the other person is just looking at the field, like trying, like really strategically trying to math everything out. And they're like, all right, like you can tell, like they think they're feeling a little confident given the situation, and then you just throw down the nope card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a there was a nope. Okay. So there's a new f mechanic. So remember remember Unstable? Yes. So in Unstable, they had the Evolve mechanic or muta mm -hmm. not Mutate. Um, it might have been Mutation. The, 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 it, was it was Augmentation. It was cards together. It was Augmentation. Augmentation. Yeah. So you could have like a robot shark kitty or whatever yeah, that kind of a was. kitten snake. Kitten snake. Um, so they basically made that a thing in real magic. Go on. It's called Mutate now. Yes. And you have to pay a summoning cost to do it, mm -hmm. um, which is actually really not that different from the mechanic in... Uh, the mechanic in... Um, unstable. Uh, unstable. Actually, Unhinged. actually, it's a lot more powerful than Unstable, but whatever. Um, and it's caused some really funny shit to happen. Yes. Um. So in blue, there's a, a spell that bounces to your hand because, of mm. course, blue has a, a bounce to your hand spell. Uh, this is really great to people who are not listening to who don't play magic. Oh, yeah. If you don't um, play magic, um, just skip forward probably like 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, no, it's not. It's not gonna be that much longer. Uh, but I had mutated a bunch of cards, mm -hmm. and somebody bounced my mutation, and I'm just like, you don't understand how that works, do you? Because they bounced the mutation, and I had all the cards back in my hand, and I just summoned them all back to the field in a better combination, and I just won the game. <laughs> so, uh, read your cards, people. Yeah, if someone has to play based off what they draw, and then you bounce their hand back, but it's all mutation, you're giving them the opportunity that they didn't just have before, it. which is to do it again, but better. Yes, yeah. yes. You're giving you're giving people a chance to, to do something better, and you're not screwing up their tempo because they already have a Mothra on the field. Yeah, like, if um, there's combos going on, don't bounce them all back, because if they played them, they had to play them based off whatever the deck gave them. Now you're giving them the chance to optimize the combo. Basically. Yeah. There is There are circumstances where that, that doesn't fly, but... True. Like, if it's a token, bounce that token. Bounce it. It disappears. Um, anywho. Uh, this has been a podcast nothing about magic. Although, well, I don't know if that's true. Mm -hmm. Have we ever covered any... Well, I guess the Loveland Frogman had magic. Uh... True. Yeah, yeah. They, there's Kinda. the thing about them having wands. Um, did we? Did we? Do, how much magic stuff have we done on this podcast? I feel like we haven't done that much. I don't think we've really done any outside of maybe episode one. Red caps. There might have been a ritual that villagers had to go through to like build a chain, mm. or there's some like devil wizard that like made this goblin immortal. Yeah, there was some yeah. Kind of, I just I, re I remember a chant and a ritual. Well, there was well the, the the chain was it was a chain of like a hollow chain filled with sand. Yeah, if my memory is correct. Yeah, we don't really do magic that often. Mm. Hmm. Maybe we should do some more magic. I don't know. We can. I don't know any magic. Oh, the Kappa cryptids. had magic. Oh Kappa yeah, had Kappa had magic. Yep. Kappa had magic. Kappa had magic. Fairies had magic. Yeah, fairies, a lot of our early fairies are explicitly you know what? magical. You know what? A lot of our earlier stuff was pretty magical. Yeah, true. Looking at this, looking at this, we had a lot more magic earlier on. I don't know what happened to the magic in this show, Brandon. It's just gone. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, this is a show about uh, cryptids, paranormal, weird stuff that goes bump in the night. Uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week's weird thing was first sighted. In 1978. 1978. Can't even right. read what I wrote. It's a pretty uh, new... It's region... Yeah, for me... Yeah. Uh, for me, I think that's pretty... Is that new for me? No, well, that's, that's, that's actually pretty late for me. General yeah, it's around my, it's around my general area. It's around my general area. a lot of the stuff I do. Yeah. Uh, the taxonomy is alien, because I don't really... It's not. It, it's not a taxonomical classification. So by al it's a alien, do you mean like actual like beep beep boop boop? We come for your butt, aliens, or are you talking alien as in like it's atypical to the point that you can't really describe it properly? I'd say more beep boop beep. Okay. Nuts and bolts. Okay. Nuts and bolts, alien. Uh, its region was Italy. Brandon, if you guess this, you are a black wizard, because I have never heard of this before. I found it. I found this, Brandon, I found this accidentally um, because I was looking for something to top Jeff, which I didn't do. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you right now, Jeff remains the, the goat of Cryptopedia yeah. as a rule because Jeff is my favorite thing mm -hmm. that I've ever learned about. <laughs> you had a moment when you learned about that song that was pretty amazing. Jeff is my favorite. I, I'm going to say this now. Jeff is my favorite cryptid. There's no doubt That's in my mind. That's fair. He's at least the cryptid with the best quotes. Yes. He is He is my uh, reason to try for this podcast yes. now. His existence it, his existence has just inspired me to find another existence that is at least as funny as him. He is the eighth wonder. He is the eighth wonder, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for the ninth. This is not the ninth. So, Brandon, what do you think this is? So, given off Alien in Italy... Mm -hmm. And yep. the greys are aliens. I'm going to say this is the Grigio, which is Italian for grey. Now, we're, we're dealing more in reptilians and Indrid cold types this week. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so The queen. That time the queen went to Italy because we all know she is a lizard person. Everyone's a lizard person. 
Um, no, it's that's not it. Uh, this week, we're going to be covering the abductions, abductions of Piers and Freda. Oh, now, okay. Fun story behind this. This was the third topic I found for this week. Um, and the first one was Russian. The second one was Japanese. And the third one is Italian. So for whatever reason, I couldn't find a thing with English sources to save my life. Ah, uh, fair. That's why we're going to have a lot fewer um, foreign language speaking uh, monsters. Yeah. Because I've also so, tried to find a lot of like foreign stuff. And I'm like, well, I can't read any of this. There are some things that are so good and I want to talk about, but I can't. I got lucky on this one because I found an article. So, um, one sec. Like, there's somewhere I've heard, like, a paragraph in English, and I'm like, that's fucking amazing. I go to websites, and there's pages and pages. Like, it's a gold mine, but none of it's in English. And you can't just do, say, uh, translate page, because that's never worked ever for anyone, ever. No, and and for something that we're talking for an hour and a half, I, I don't really want to go off a of Google Translate yeah, for an hour exactly. and a half. <laughs> um, so for this week's episode, I could only find credulous sources mm -hmm. because of the fact that it's originally Italian, uh, and none of my usual skeptical sources wrote about it. Uh, oh. Probably because, and here's the reasoning, probably because it has all the same normal problems that alien abduction stories have. Oh, that none of them actually happened? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it appears that the, that all of these it originate from a 2010 article, which I think actually was... Okay, so I found multiple uh, copyrights dates for this, but 2010 was the one that I found. Okay. Called the Zanfretta Alien Abductions. Italy. In, in parentheses. Uh, on the now defunct American Monsters website. I found it through a Wayback Machine thing because the oh. American Monsters site is dead. Is it also, dead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, this is not an American Monster. No. Explicitly. <laughs> explicitly not. So, whatever. So, let's go in our Wayback Machine. Way, way back. Actually, I guess it would have to be a TARDIS because we don't want to go... We don't want to go way back into the same location. We want to go time and relative dimensions in space. Um, <laughs> but isn't uh, it less safe to use a TARDIS? Because the whole like joke of the TARDIS is that it just it doesn't take you to the right spot. Well, no. the That's the joke of the Doctor's TARDIS. Heart TARDIS. Oh, I gotcha. His... his his TARDIS was a, a broken down piece of junk. Yeah, that's why it always looks like a police box is because um, the camouflage got broken. So it always displays mm -hmm. as a police box. And that's definitely not due to budget restrictions way back when the show started. No, no. And the, the fact that they could get their hands on a police box for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no. That has that has nothing to do with that particular narrative element. Um, so, anywho, this takes place in... I'm going to mispronounce every single Italian word. Oh, I got you. Just to let you know. Uh, I'm Italian. I, I know all of them. You're the least Italian human I know. The most Italian. Brandon, if I put you and our friend Nick in the same room and you make contact with each other, because of the, the level of Italian that Nick is and the level of not Italian you are, it would cause an explosion as though matter and antimatter connected. He literally just posted something the other day. He is drinking grappa and making charcuterie with his Italian grandparents. <laughs> listen, listen. I love Nick, but he is the most Italian man I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's no that's no dig. That's just the, a fact. Um, so this takes place in Toriglia Tor Tor T O R R I G L I a, Italy. You didn't move your hands uh, enough. I, I'm not Italian. I, I'm i a lot of things. Italian is, like, the only thing I'm not. Toragria. Yeah, that's that's it. I'm going to assume that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to call it Toragilla. Toragilla. I am... Listen. I am super, super bad at... You just made me do a spit take with rice. <laughs> I know. It's very funny. 
<laughs> you know, while I was writing this, I didn't, I, I, I practiced every other word, but the first Italian word that shows up in this, 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 this script. So on December 6th, this, this, is, this takes place December 6th, 1978. On an early December morning, Piers and Freda, a private security guard, age 26 and father of two, uh, was driving to a client's house. And I'm assuming basically the way that these private security guards worked is they were like house sitters where they would drive out to a place, make sure nothing bad was happening on the site. That makes sense. Like you go on vacation leave. for a while and then you hire a yeah. guy like, hey, come make sure everything's fine. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm assuming that's what they are. Uh, it's a little weird to me because I don't think – I don't know of that existing in the United States because I feel like that's cops. Yeah, like there's cops and then house sitting for when you go away or at least the function that yeah. it seems like he's carrying out is something you hire someone you kind of kind of know to like go take care yeah. of your house. Except they don't know the people don't know this guy at all. Yeah. Is my assumption. No, so, I've done house sitting before from when I worked at at, at the farm stand. Where, like, yeah. they're just someone would be like, hey, I'm going on vacation for a while. My house is only, like, three blocks over. You work here. Do you want to just, can I give you my house keys and, and leave envelopes of money for you? It's like, one, yes. I know I'm not, not, not a shady person. But you don't know me. I'm a cashier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you know, they know that you're around money. Yeah, I guess. That's that's the only thing. Also, also you, you worked... You worked in Stone Ridge, Brandon. Yeah, that's true. But I was also a teenager. Yes, but you worked in Stone Ridge. I wouldn't hire a random teenager to, to come into my home. Do you live in Stone Ridge? No. There you go. <laughs> no, you live in... Brandon, you live in Kingston. Yeah. If you did that in Kingston, you're a moron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so while he was driving to the house, all the electrical systems in his car died simultaneously, basically as he was pulling up to the house. Um, it was at this time, Zanfretta witnessed four beams of light moving in his client's garden. Assuming they were thieves, and taking into account that security guards are basically the same everywhere. He opened he fire. His... <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Wait. You're so close. No. You're so close. It's so funny. Oh, no. He took his revolver and a flashlight and began to sneak up on the potential burglars because that's the thing to do. Can you sneak up with a flashlight? Uh, I don't think so. But what I'm going to say is you don't. If you're if you're a, secu a private security guard, mm -hmm. you're you're not exactly like you don't exactly have a license to kill. I mean, tell that to Blackwater. Well, listen, Dick Cheney has had a lot of heart attacks, so they just give him that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck fuck Blackwater. Um, <laughs> I don't think they're around anymore. I think they changed names. Like, same company and everything. They, I think they just had to change yeah, their well, name because they had bad press. Well, well yeah, because that's exactly what happened to the the uh, healthcare thing around us. They've changed names, like, four times now. I think they're... They were Mount Kisco at one point. I think they're HealthQuest now. Oh, yeah, I've um, heard of that, yeah. Yeah, they've changed their name so many times because they've gotten, they've gotten malpractice suits so many times. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you just change your name. And nothing yeah. else. Uh, also, if you're if you were wondering, Blackwater is now called Academy. I knew it. I knew they changed their name. Yeah. Yeah. 20, 2011. So, yeah. Um. Anywho, so while creeping along the rock wall, Zanfredo was about to surprise the burglars, which, as I'm, uh, was completely insane because in none of the article that I see that he had called this in to a radio operator. So he's he's sneaking up on presumably four burglars, one person, and hasn't radioed this in. Uh, I don't care who you are. I value my life too much to try and sneak up on four humans. Yeah, but he has a revolver, so he's got 
more than four bullets, John. Don't what don't you understand? That's how math works. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I forgot. I forgot that's how math works. Yeah. Um, four and people, I forgot six that. Shots. Listen, you don't have to call it in unless there's seven people. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess he might have watched a few too many action movies. There, there were th- that. This was like the the era of the super cop action movie, wasn't it? The seventies. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. So and spaghetti westerns. Everyone sliding across the hoods of their cars. Everybody, mm-hmm. which I've tried to oh. do before, not as easy as it looks. No, it's not, and it's bad for your car. I mean, who? I, let me rephrase that. I practiced that on cars. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> not my cars. It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but you know this guy totally you you know that he totally uh slid across the the hood of a car oh yeah listen that's why was, he, his back pockets are filled with vaseline there was there was no no reasonable reason for him to do it but he did it no exactly. because he's a He's a man. He's a man who's sneaking up on four people with a loaded revolver. You know what and a he did? He slid across the hood of the car, then had to walk back around the car because he was already on the right side of the car to begin with. Correct. He totally was. There's yeah. no doubt in my mind. So, while sneaking, he suddenly suddenly felt someone touch his shoulder. When I sneak, I like to have someone with a violin just pluck strings behind me, so I sound like I sneak in a cartoon. Fair. Fair. You hire people for that. Yes, I have a violin. I, be... I do it myself. Oh, I, I feel like. Well, but here's the thing: you can't do it yourself. Some you have to have someone else do it because you have to have someone else there. Because the joke is when the camera pans out, there's someone like walking normally behind you, plinking on the violin. <laughs> I like the idea of self sabotage sneaking, where someone's carrying their and plucking their own violin while trying, and someone just turns it like, I can hear you. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm playing the violin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Legally, the, legally, when I'm plucking this violin, you can't hear me. The pizzicato is silent as far as you're concerned. Legally, I and he pulled out his violin. What? Uh, that's 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 how sneaking sounds. Listen, listen. Like you're you're at the ATM, you just put in your pin number and all here's That's how you know I'm behind you. But you're not allowed mm-hmm. legally. You can't turn around because I have the violin. You can't. You can't. That's how it works. You can't. Yeah. You're also invisible in the in the mirror. Exactly. It's we've been looking for invi- uh, invisibility cloaks. We had it all along. It was just a strut of Arius. What do you call an Italian vampire? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Ragula. Ragula. Yeah, like like ragu. So, turning to meet his personal space invader, <laughs> Zanfretta, I felt very proud about this this pun, Zanfretta met face-to-face with what some might call a literal space invader. Oh, John. I was proud of that. We just had, like, back-to-back dad jokes. I know. It was bad. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to cut your dad joke off with another one. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a cat dad joke. Yes. Yes, because my little assholes. <laughs> Boy, finish the sentence. Finish the sentence because you get to say my little. Because so far, out of context, you could be talking about your medical condition. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I am, I am. I wasn't going to say anything else. Um, <laughs> anywho, so the entity was described as an enormous, green, ugly, and frightful creature, like much like my assholes. Uh, with undulating skin, as though he were very fat or dressed in a loose gray tunic, no less than 10 feet tall. Later, Zanfretta would punch up his description. They were hairy, had greenish skin, round fingertips, which is the weirdest thing. Like, that's such a weird description to me. I mean, I assume like, that. I, I, It's such, like, a thing that's like, why would you do that? Human beings assume rounded fingertips. Unless you mean no nails. I, I don't know. Um, then say no nails, but whatever. Uh, they had triangular re- yellow eyes and red veins across their foreheads. Supposedly, they also had a rebreather-like device in their mouths. However, the reporting appears to the... Uh, uh, according in the reporting, it appears that this resurfaced under the influence 
of hypnotic regression. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Yes, it's very good, Brandon. I hope you're ready. Uh, and there's a picture of uh, our friend right there. Also, I don't think, like, I don't, I really don't know the answer to this, but I don't think rebreathers are a thing. I think that's like a James Bond thing. You can't rebreathe your own. Oxygen. They have little canisters where well, you can breathe, oh, to, like, out of a little canister for a while underwater and hold that yeah. in your mouth. But I don't think, like, a standalone well, rebreather for indefinite amount of time, I don't think that's. I don't think that's it's not real. It's not real in real life. So like if we're if we're talking. So let's say that they need. Uh, I don't know. What is a like a chlorine based atmosphere? I don't know. Just because there's less chlorine in our, our mm. air than oxygen. Um, so let's say they need a chlorine based ac- atmosphere. There's no way that you're going to be able to synthesize a chlorine based atmosphere from a small rebreather. It's just not going to happen because. Unless you're doing, like, literal alchemy. Yeah, that's why you need the big like, tanks, right? Because the whole thing is, like, a rebreather would reuse whatever you're exhaling and, like, turn it back into something. But the fact that you breathe it in, that's because your body's using it and then it's going to process it. And therefore, whatever you breathe yeah. out won't have it anymore. So I don't think yes. that's a thing. I don't know because well, I've never looked at them. I've only ever seen them in James Bond. And I'm like, well, James I, Bond isn't... I, I, think, I think that conceptually... If you're exhaling carbon dioxide, mm-hmm. conceptually, if you could split the ionic bonds between the carbon and the oxygen molecule and somehow manage to make oxygen afterwards and not make just a bunch of free carbon and oxygen elements, uh, you could hypothetically do it. But I think that the energy required... We, we, well, yeah, there's the energy requirement, but also we yeah. breathe mostly nitrogen. And then oxygen yeah. we use, but that, that that's what our, our blood carries, but that's not primarily what we're breathing in. And then what you exhale it's, is the CO2, because that's how you get that out of your body and out of your blood. Is, well, because it's, it's bind, it's bind, it binds carbon and all that. Yeah. This, this is not... Neither of us are experts on breathing. No. I want to point no. out. Um, I will say this, though. Actually, I, I am. The, I've been breathing for most of my life. Yeah, I think so, too. I think I've been doing it pretty good, too. Well, not good, but I've been doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this. When I was thinking about this, I wasn't thinking of the James Bond ones. I was thinking of the ones from uh, The Phantom Menace that oh. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn use. When they used. have to swim over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of that better because in my head canon, they're basically breaking down the water molecules into oxygen. Yeah, with all that weird, like, a long time ago, but it's also the future... Uh, tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, basically, basically, whatever these things are doing is they're they're operating under Star Wars Star Wars rules, basically. Okay. Uh, that that's all I know. They're 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 Star Wars rules. They're um, Star they're prequel rules. So there's a difference. Uh, nope. What? Nope. <laughs> hey, listen, Wait. listen. There's a back to tank. That, that Luke goes into in Empire, and it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. There's a back to tank that Luke goes into in Empire. You don't remember the tank? I don't remember Luke being submerged. Oh, Brandon. Brandon, you have to see the Luke Skywalker diaper. What? You've never seen Luke Skywalker's diaper? Luke Skywalker diaper why oh there's a wh- I don't just re- open the thing I sent you open the thing I sent you why don't it's I back- remember this I don't know like I remember that very very vividly because I was like why is this a thing I, I, for real, don't re- recall this. Oh. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it was. There's a deviant art that someone put Kylo Ren into the back of the tank. Well, there's a lot of that. Uh, what was, when, when, when did that happen in the movie? Um, ah, uh, shoot. It was. One sec. I'm watching a... This is useless. 
oh, this is this is absolutely useless. I think if my memory is correct, he was in. Yeah, he was in the. Oh, now I remember. So remember how in um, Empire it starts off with a tauntaun. Yeah. And the wampa. Yes. Yeah. So it's after he gets back from that endeavor, he's placed in the back to tank to heal because he experienced hypothermia. Yeah, because he was doing so bad. I don't remember that. I remember like he cuts the thing open, he sleeps in the tum tum like everybody wants to do. But then, yep, yep. I thought they smelled. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's that's super a thing. Huh. I can't believe I don't recall that. I can't believe you can't recall either. That That's like burned into my memory. Also because every Star Wars game after it has used Bacta, like Bacta tanks as the healing item instead of like uh, med kits. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's why. It's because of that scene in uh, Empire. Interesting. Yep. Huh. Um... It's actually important that you know that because that's going to come up in a second, too. Oh, no. (laughs) So, stunned by the sight of the reptilian entity, Zanfretta dropped his flashlight in terror, somehow managed to retrieve the light, and then sprinted to his car. While approaching his car, he reported a brilliant light emanated by a massive triangular shape, ascending with a hiss from behind the client's house. The security guard then felt a searing wave of heat as he struggled to enter this car, where he would call his company's dispatch, which honestly he should have done from the start. Yeah, that's Carlo took a yeah, yeah. So Carlo Tocolino, a radio operator at Zanfretta's company, reported that Zanfretta called at twelve fifteen a.m. and was speaking in a confused and agitated fashion. When asked for a description of his assailants, Zanfretta's response was only, "No, they aren't men. They aren't men. My God, they are ugly." My God, are they ugly? But in Italian, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, Again, he just said it, but moved his hands more. And I mean, don't ju- he's just being mean right now. Like they didn't do anything well, to he's, him. He's just saying they're ugly. Yeah. He's he's not. He's he's prejudging them without really getting to know them yeah, yet. Yeah. Don't body shame the alien. No. He's he's definitely body shaming them. Mm-hmm. Um. So at this point, Carlo loses contact and gets another patrol of two men. And I want to point out here, it's two men. From the security company, Brandon. Not cops. From the security company. So I think... I'm, I couldn't figure this out, but I think the way that law enforcement works in Italy is different. It's Yeah, it works by you just declare yourself law enforcement. That, yeah, they're basically all Pinkertons. Um, so they send a patrol of two men to check up on him. However, due to icy conditions that night, because it was a December night, remember, mm-hmm. uh, it takes an hour for them to reach the site and finds Zinfreda lying prone on the ground in front of the house. Fearful of the other officers, Zanfreda leapt to his feet and pointed his flashlight and pistol at them. Wait. <laughs> oh, God. So somehow, the two men were able to calm him down, and curiously, Zanfreda's clothes were still warm, despite being in the cold. The Italian military police were called to investigate, which... Honestly, to me, that's like, whoa, you went from security guards. You basically went from rent a cops to the military police. That's kind of wild. Yeah. Also, if his clothes are still warm, do you think he was waiting in his car until he heard another car coming? And he's like, I have to run outside and lay down. And then he just like went down. You're not allowed to do fake Italian accents anymore. Why? It's banned. No, they're so good. Listen, I'm. It's 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 canceled. You also didn't use your hands properly. They were off camera. By your own metrics. Were- oh, okay, okay. God damn it. Um, so they inspected the site and found two distinct markings in the frost-covered ground, measuring about nine feet in diameter and were shaped like horseshoes. Uh, I couldn't find a good picture of those, but supposedly it exists. Okay. <laughs> I'll um, take your word for it. Yeah. Reportedly... 52 residents of that town I can't pronounce the name of uh, reported seeing the UFO's light and uh, the commandant of the Zanfretta station, Antonio Nucci, fully believed his guard experience and is quoted as saying the following. I can say 
with certainty that he is a clear-thinking man with no strange fantasies in his head. When we went to investigate the scene the next day, he almost didn't want to come. He was so scared. Only something exceptional could have frightened him so. So, could it also just be drugs? Because he sounds kind of like he could be coming off of something. It does, and it it's going to sound more and more like drugs as we read this. Oh, are we? Good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to sound... Y- you'll see. You'll see. So... Before moving on yes, to the next encounter, I should note something. At this point, the American Monster site describes the aliens as reptoids, which is new to me because I've really only ever heard them described as reptilians. However, when I was Googling reptoid out of curiosity, I found, about, found out about the Reptoid Research Center, which huh. looks amazing. And Brandon... Why don't you click on that link? Oh, uh, all right. Let's see. Reptoid Research Center. I hope it's a real. Oh, I love this website, though. Oh, it's very good. It's it's a very, very good website. Um, I was going to pass on this at first. There's a lot of text that is green. Yeah, I was going to just take this as it was and then, like, just plug that picture into the into the episode notes. Um, But then I read the mission statement. <clears throat> yeah. In our quest to answer the age-old question, are we alone? We've been conditioned to search space for aliens and ETs. This, in in italics, is a classical magician's distraction! Exclamation point. Instead of looking for the other-than-human, all hyphenated for some reason, intelligent life off our planet, we should instead be searching Earth's many thousands of miles of underground tunnels, caverns, and cave systems. Scientists have recently updated their Identify Animal Species listing to a total of 1.2 million, and the predicted total species list to 8.7 million. That means we have yet to encounter the other 86%, or majority, of life forms with which we share our tiny blue planet. Our underworld is where we will one day discover various species of Earth-evolved intelligent beings that we have been mistakenly calling aliens an actual visiting ET basis of operations. Crypto Hunter, John Rhodes. <laughs> oh, that is good. Oh, there's a button that says, who is John Rhodes? He's the world's oh. foremost authority on reptilian humanoids. I mean, you, it's, it, we can stop at the first comma, John. He's the world's foremost authority on reptilian humanoids. So who will know any better than him? I, I mean, you're right. You're right. I... Also, I uh, I went to my 23 and Me because I did do the Ancestry thing. And I, I just screenshotted because I was going to be like, see, I can do Italian accents because I'm part Italian. No. I'm 0.0% no. Italian. I have none of it. <laughs> none of it. Brandon, that's almost a statistical anomaly. I know. That's why I'm so it to you. It's like, wait, how? Just none? Like, how is there none? <laughs> that's like nearly. That's That's so like. For a individual who originated from a European nation, like you're, you're, you're super white. Oh yeah, no, I'm. Uh, oh, well, oh, let me go back. Like, click on this button real quick. Um, uh, 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 oh, I went one, one too far. I need that kind of detailed breakdown. I am ninety. Uh, something. Uh, I'm like ninety four percent completely white now they break out the different kinds of white into all that's why it took me a second to do the math <laughs> because they break it into like 30 different kinds of white so i'm like 30 different kinds of white um but yeah so the le- the the like the breakdown is i'm for the listeners 49 percent eastern european 27 percent french and german and all of these have like 30 other freaking countries and you know whatever but all adds up to I'm all white, and then the last four point six percent is Ashkenazi Jewish. <laughs> it's still pretty white. Yeah, no, I, I'm. Some would say that I'm a hundred percent white. Because <laughs> Ashkenazi Jew- Jews were just uh, white people who were converted to Ju- Judaism. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm all yeah. white. They're not. They're not from the the, the b- biblical. You can't drink uh, me. You will die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Brandon, here's the other, here's the question I have for you. Yeah. 
How white do you think John Rhodes is? John Rhodes? The man, the man, the myth, the legend, the crypto hunter, John Rhodes. Because I've seen his uh I, I clicked on his 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 Twitter and uh he's pretty I'm going to say very white. I'll say on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, he is Elmer's glue. Um, and this fair, is because his fair. parents last named, uh, they're named after the ice cream. Rocky Rhodes? Yeah. Hmm. Isn't Rocky Road not white, though? I actually... Yeah, I'm now but what... it's ice cream. Is that... Yeah, Rocky Road is not... It's also spelt different. Yeah, it is. Well, fine. Randy Rhodes. Wait, I mean, Rhodes is the name. Guitar? I don't know, but the the name of the name of a place in Italy is Rhodes. Connections, coincidences. Ooh, what does that mean? Nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was a website I found. I, I there's a lot of uh, alien stuff. Alien stuff is a dangerous path. Yeah. So at this point, a reporter. Reno Di Stefano, uh, the source of this week's art, some of the artwork I found this week. So the the picture of the aliens above, I found it on his website. Um, enters the story. He believes in Freda and established a working relationship with him. Reportedly, at this point, Zenfreda was starting to suffer from his account, as literally almost every abductee does. Uh, people call me on the phone at all hours just to play jokes on me. I don't know what it was that I saw, but I saw, and I'm not a liar. If I could have, I would have. I wouldn't have reported my experiences. Now that I see the consequences, so I kind of feel bad for him at this point, um, because this seems to be a fairly common trend amongst abductees, where uh, the like reporters come out of the woodwork. People come to like mess with them. It, it happens in cryptid sightings all the time too. Um, just just don't bother people, <laughs> <laughs> listeners. Don't bother people. I mean, I don't think I have to talk to you, talk to our listeners about that, because I feel like, I feel like if you are listening to this podcast, you either know us, which means you probably have severe social anxiety, uh huh, or you have social anxiety by default because you're listening to a podcast about cryptids. That's not a that's not a dig at you. I have social anxiety. I'm just saying. I feel like there's a Venn diagram there. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks an awful lot like a soul, a circle. Um, <laughs> so at this point, De Stefano convinced Sanfreda to undergo hypnotic regression on Perfect. December twenty third, nineteen seventy eight. I'm not going to talk about all the problems with hypnotic regression, uh, but I will say I philosophically disagree with it conceptually because is most likely implanting false memories. And the, the notion of memory is already so tenuous um, that ethically I feel as though anyone who's attempting to mess with someone's uh, memories is not a good person. Oh no. And I think Outright. some of them aren't even aware that they're doing that. No, no, they're not. There, there are people who are legitimately believing what they're doing, but the problem is, you can very easily screw up someone's like memory by doing a hypnotic regression and creating false memories. And then those false memories become stronger. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I think there was some research on it. I didn't look into it too much just because it's one of those things that I've, I've heard about a lot when uh, listening to podcasts about this or reading articles about this and just hypnotic regression generally is a red flag. Um, just as a rule of thumb. So the session was held in nearby Genoa and performed by Dr. Mauro Moretti. Moretti. Yeah, that's it. Uh, during this session, Zanfreda claimed to have recalled that he was in fact abducted by the aliens and that he had, they had transported him to a hot location where they examined and interrogated him. While they did not speak Italian, they did have a, a device to translate their speech. During the interrogation, they revealed that they came from the planet Titonia, located in the third galaxy, and that they want to talk with us and that they will soon return in larger numbers. So I will point out right here, this is directly con conflicting with John Rhodes' hypothesis that mm -hmm. reptilians are uh, terrestrial evolved creatures. 
So I'm curious as to what John Rhodes' sentiment is on this case. Now that Who I'm thinking knows? about it. <laughs> he probably has emotions about it. Like I almost guarantee this ma- that that man has emotions about uh, mm-hmm. the Sanfreda case. So um, while not an invasion force, the creatures did return to accost Sanfreda on the 26th of December. It was 11.45 p.m. Zanfreda was driving his patrol char through a tunnel near the Scoffero Pass when he suddenly lost control of the vehicle. Now, Brandon, yes. when I say lost control of the vehicle, what do you think happened? Um, So there's... Uh, I'm picturing a barrel roll. A barrel roll? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're completely wrong. He Uh-oh. didn't spin out. He didn't do a barrel roll. Rather, he was no longer able to control... The car. <coughs> Sorry, it was wait. Driving, <coughs> it was driving autonomously. Oh, God. An autonomous automobile. Yes. Oh. It was driving as though radio controlled. Oh, God. I had to read that paragraph like five times to realize what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> because my brain just was not prepared for that. Uh. The radio operator said Zanfretta spoke in a controlled voice. The car has stopped. Oh, wait, wait, I skipped some stuff. Um, so he reported the anomalous behavior over radio while attempting to correct it to no avail. Like a comedy movie, the car came to a sudden stop, and I think he actually, like, hit his face. Because, of course, he did. Uh, and it was bathed in a white light. The radio operator said Zanfretta spoke in a controlled voice. The car has stopped. I saw a bright light. Now I'm getting out. Zenfredo was found at 1.10 a.m. in a field near the road, dry and warm, despite the downpour that night. He was apparently in a state of shock. They say I must leave with him. What about my children? I don't want to. I don't want to. Once again, the military police were called, and despite being left behind in the cold rain, the car was still warm to the touch, now the, like, the, like as though it were in the sunlight. Um, and the interior was hot as an oven. The car was also surrounded by large footprints, measuring 20 inches in length and 8 inches in width. To my knowledge, there exists no photographic evidence of these prints. Uh, The article described them as Bigfoot-like. Additionally, Zanfretta's revolver, which is a 38 special because I feel like by law, I feel like by law, if it's a paranormal case in the 70s, a 38 special has to make an appearance at least once. By law. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, It had been shot five times. However, when asked, he could not recall when or at what the gun had been fired. After this event, he was examined by a neurologist, Dr. Giorno Giannotti, and it was found to be sane. And there's a little link for our, uh, our, whatchamacallit, uh, listeners, our, our, our jackalope listeners. Um, because uh oh of this, course this, this of just course. reminded me of why Donkey did i Brains. not expect that to be something with danny devito in it why well, it has to be by law we have yeah. to have danny devito um yeah so it was it was a very donkey brains moment to me because it's like what <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> like uh, i i don't know declarations of sanity are always weird to me <laughs> <laughs> um, once again, at the request of Reno de Stefano, Zanfretta underwent hypnotherapy, hypnotic regression. And this time, it was filmed. Oh. Uh, there is a, a, YouTube, a black and white YouTube video of him being uh, filmed, doing hypnotic regression. I didn't watch all of it because I don't speak Italian, and it was very boring. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'll just distill the bits that I It's a I really found. good, tight close-up of a face. Yeah, I, it's not fun. It's not fun to watch. Um, so this time, Zinfreda's story included him being stripped and forced to wear a helmet, which gave him the ability to understand their language. However, he experienced tremendous pain while doing so. Uh, meanwhile, another creature took his revolver and fired it at a panel presumably to assess the lethality of the weapon against their kind. So yeah, 
That's that's what happened that time. That's why his gun had been shot. Oh, good. I I do feel like I feel like someone should. I don't know if it existed yet, but someone should have probably took and taken like a swab of his hand for a gunpowder analysis. But yeah, whatever. um, don't say that. So, like a good abductee, Sanfred's story doesn't end there. Keep in mind, he's been abducted twice already. <laughs> Jumping forward about half a year to July 30th, 1979, Sanfreda was doing a motorcycle patrol in a residential area of Genoa. This is about 30, 46 minutes away from the original location. This time, he disappeared and was found two hours later on a summit of nearby Mount Fass, Fassi. Once again, by fellow guards, because for whatever reason, the cops never get involved in this. Um, for some reason, the article you, I used as a source claimed that no one saw him going off the mountain as though it's evidence of something paranormal happening. <laughs> I get that it was a single road, but like I have a single road in front of my house and I don't notice when people drive by all the time. Yeah. I, I just want to point that out. <laughs> like it's cause he's too busy <laughs> playing magic in with the transformers with the pop music and the, uh, animal crossing. You crazy kid. Hey, listen, man. I got my birthday presents from my Animal Crossing villagers yesterday. They do that? They do that. I've never considered time travel before, but maybe I shall. Well, don't, 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 don't. Because you'd have to travel, you'd have to travel like a year for you. But I want the birthday presents, and I know I'm not, I'm going to be bored with Animal Crossing in probably like less than a week. (laughs) Have you, have you, have you, um, gotten the evil sisters yet even no i've got the the those two creepos they've got their own little nooks cranny shop going timmy on. and tommy they've got al al boy there um i've got some hedgehog pervert that likes to hang out and sell clothes in the town square hey hey that's 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 mabel yeah and i got a, I got a like a kangaroo but there's something not right with them are you talking about sahara i don't know and i've got a an, is it is one an armadillo? I don't think there's an armadillo. There's there's quite a few perverts lurking around town, so I'm trying to figure out. I need to get more money so I can try to like separate their houses because I don't like how much they're hanging out with each other. Brandon, <laughs> I I feel I feel terrible for your your villagers. <laughs> I just connected all the islands because I had like a river, so I had three chunks of land. So they're all just connected now. Oh, there is an armadillo. I didn't know there was an armadillo, and her name's Annabelle. Yeah, 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 Annabelle, yeah, her. And then I've got this goat that all he talks about is lifting, but I think he's got some shady shit going on in his basement. (laughs) Brendan, I'm worried about your villagers. So, honestly, the goat, like, all the rest seem weird. He scares me the most because I'll go out, explore other islands. I'll run to like Marina, some other things. And I'll be like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, we'll come see your island. We want to travel more. And then you know what? I've seen them on multiple different islands. They've never came to mind once. I think that goat has their bodies in his basement. Which is also, I've got like (laughs) the way the river works. I've got two really big pieces of land and one little one. So I might move his house to that little chunk of and, like, isolate him from everybody else. Because maybe Brandon. then I'll get more villagers. Brandon. That's not how the game works. Uh, there's, there's, I have a narrative in my head of what every villager does and really that goat. Like, they're all creepy and, have like, they're perverts, but that goat is way worse. Brandon. I'm not going to yuck your yum and how you play Animal Crossing, but you play Animal Crossing so differently from every other human I've ever played Animal Cross- <laughs> seen play Animal Crossing. You are so paranoid of your villagers, and you're just like... I don't, I don't like any them. of them. I don't, tru- I don't trust none them. of them. I don't trust any of them. Those fucking raccoons are creepy. They never blink. They talk at the same time, and they follow you around the shop. Why do they do that? It's a cult. Goddamn Brandon. <laughs> and then that owl... I mean, he's like two into fossils. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't you go talking trash about Blathers? Blathers, what's my boy. the glue holding the fossils together? Nobody should be that way. What? He's horny. Are you for... talking about him sniffing glue? He's horny for fossils. Fair. I don't think there's anything wrong with being horny for fossils, man. Dinosaurs are cool. 
Dinosaurs are cool, but he's like too too into them. I disagree. Anywho, uh, so once again, Zanfretta underwent hypnotic regression in which he found out that in a past life he was uh, Tom Nook. That didn't happen. What? That didn't happen. Are you I sure? Yeah. So, however, this time he was injected with sodium pentothal. Oh, nice. At the International Center of Medical and Psychological Hypnosis in Milan by Professor Marco Marchesin. While under the influence of the drug, Zanfretta claimed to have been lifted from the ground by the alien spaceship into the alien spaceship by a green light. The professor claimed no human can knowingly lie while he is under pentothal treatment. So I think it is very probable that Zanfretta had these encounters. So when I saw that, I was just like, oh God, what? <laughs> because there's a problem with sodium pentothal. Um, the application of sodium pentothal as a truth serum is commonly regarded as torture. Nice. <laughs> because it doesn't actually force the user to tell the truth. Uh, the long and short of it is it causes the user to become more loquacious, not more truthful. Meaning... Uh, they talk a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So instead of a needle, they could just dish out margaritas. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so in the vein of torture, it results in an addled mental state that can make someone under the influence more pliable to the question asker's will. In short, it's super reckless to use, uh, but a, pro- a, prof- a professional of hypnotic regression has already well passed the limits of ethics and memory manipulation. I would love to see the ethical review board of the International Center of Medical Psychological Hypnosis in Milan because apparently it doesn't exist. Oh. Then again, this is... Well, but no, no, this is 79, so it's already, like, past the point of uh, when, it was, when it was in vogue to be just complete monsters Yeah. when it comes to medical research. So yeah, yeah, that gave me some that gave me some yucky feelings about this story. <laughs> it gave you the yucks. It gave me the yucks. Uh, yeah. D- d- so I get that he probably consented to the sodium pentothal, but it- it's still body autonomy and all that stuff, and it, it it it's a bunch of ethical quandaries that I. I don't really want to talk about on this show because they're super downers. So Zenfreda's luck doesn't improve from there. Nearly a year from this sighting, uh, from his first sighting on December 2nd, Zenfreda had a fourth encounter at 10.30 p.m. in a suburb of Genoa. This time, four patrol guards searched for their coworker when they saw a large cloud-like object floating above them. Brandon, he has disappeared four t- uh, four times at this point. <laughs> four times in the span of a year. I, I don't know. Something Something's up. I know. I'm starting to think with the cl- cloud-like object, maybe he just, like, vapes. A lot. Like, blowing cotton. Yeah. The, on on the, uh, the McElroy's who vapes, he's always winning. Yes. He's always winning. Um... So two beams of light came from the cloud and illuminated the patrol cars, uh, at which point the engines died. One of the guards gets out of the car and menaces the UFO with a pistol. Uh, Picture like a grumpy old man with a cane, like shaking. It's basically old man yells at cloud. Yeah. Like literally. Um, At which point the lights were cut and the UFO simply slipped away. According to reports... Oh, they're like, oh, he saw us, he saw us. Quick, kill the lights, kill oh, the lights. Oh, shit, a gun? A gun? Yeah. Oh, man, we're like space titanium. We gotta run. Um, but bullets, bullets just tear right through us. We found out when, when that guy... Point, when we used that guy's 38 Special, we, we found that one out. Um, according to the report, one guard committed suicide a few months later. The article purports it as the implications like that... He did it because of the implications of the event. Mm-hmm. But nobody lived that man's life but him, and I'm not going to say that the sighting of a UFO caused a human to take their own life because yeah. that's ghoulish as fuck. Um, uh, 
it's not evidence of anything other than that man decided to take his own life. There, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and no one can pass judgment on him. Sorry. I, I just get mad when people do stuff like that, but mm-hmm. whatever. So what happened to Zenfreda that night appears to not have been reported, Um, which is weird because, like, he disappears and then nothing. However, the next evening... At 9.30, he had yet another encounter. While at a gas station, Zanfreda heard someone calling to him from the shadows outside of the station. A tall entity with a bald, egg-shaped head wearing a checkered suit with a steel chest plate forcibly compelled Zanfreda to obey him. He was ordered to drive his car into a small cloud hovering above the ground. To me, that's a fog bank, but... Yeah. Uh, huh. Due to his the apparent compulsion, he complied, and he and his car were levitated into the cloud and up into a spaceship. Nice! So, on the spaceship, Zanfreda claims to have seen a number of paranormal things. Most notably, a large collection of transparent cylinders filled with blue liquids. Oh. One such container contained a large frog-shaped body described by the entities as an enemy of ours from the other planet. Um, <laughs> the entities at this point give him a transparent sphere with an electrically charged pyramid in order to give it to J. Allen Hynek, an infamous UFO ufologist from the United States. Apparently, <laughs> the sphere held the answers to how humans were supposed to live. But for some reason, only known to him, he hid the objects in the hills near Genoa. Okay. Why? I, I don't know. Uh, you'd think that he'd want to show it off like as like, see, I'm not crazy. He got he got distracted by all that salami. Mm. Prosciutto? No, Genoa. Hmm? General salami? General salami? No, Genoa. No, that's not even a joke. That's a type of salami. Oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't know. I'm not very big up on my two meats. Oh, see, I like I like the charcut. The charcuts, the charcuteries, the charcuteries. Yeah, yeah. So white. <laughs> uh, yep. Apparently, the aliens really love Zinfreda because he would then go on to disappear once again, February fourteenth, nineteen eighty. He was found in a state of shock and mild hypothermia, and a villager was said to have found seen an, a UFO around the time that Zinfreda was found. At this point, his hypnotic regression was said to have gotten cryptic with him saying things such as, question with negative answer, Tixel. You can't work out anything in a case like this. To believe or not to believe doesn't mean anything. Each thing in his own time. His voice was reportedly guttural and sometimes in an unknown language. Ha ha. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, it's almost as though at the point of getting abducted five times he's starting to have a different outlook on the world and maybe his hypnotic regressions are resulting in a uh his subconscious mind just coming to the forefront with the fact that he's like literally going insane because he thinks he's being abducted by aliens maybe maybe but you know whatever it's all real um so one more time zanfredo vanished on august 13th 1980 however The entities had not made contact when he was found. At this point, his story effectively ends. I will point something out uh, that's mentioned as a footnote, and I realized this as I was reading this story to you. Um, So, on Reno DiStefano's website... Yes. He has a small blurb about, like, the end of everything. Mm -hmm. And he says something that's a little bit cryptic to me. But because I don't speak Italian, I can't really do good research on this. Uh, the ending of his his write up is anywho, anyhow, he got into trouble with the Italian justice and left his job as a security guard. Now an Italian company is planning to make a movie about his adventures with the aliens. So I'm reading that as though he got in trouble with the law. <laughs> yeah, like he, which yeah uh, is kind of important in a story where a man consistently disappears like, six times over the course of two years. Like, that's kind of important. That's not a footnote. Yeah, that's like I think he a... would have gotten his hands on some spice and got lost a few times. Yeah, I-, I can't prove this, but that smells an awful lot like a guy 
who got under the influence and then just had a, mm. a habit of disappearing and showing up places. Skuma will do that to you. It reminds me of a certain event from our lives that I won't go into much detail about. I know what you're talking about. In which a man appeared in your car. I know what you're talking after about. being disappeared for a few days. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, in uh, apparently, though, recent years, he has been contacted by the aliens again, uh, but there's no details on it. Like, he wasn't abducted, but he was contacted by them, I suppose. In 1984, Rio de Stefano published the book, The Zanfretta Case, and a two-part docudrama was made for Rai TV. That's all I know about the story, and that's where it ends, basically. Uh, at the end of the day, this smells like a guy who had either a psychotic break or a drug-induced, like, fugue state yeah, of sorts. Yeah, he had, like, several fugue states. Yeah. Um, th- this sounds like a man who had some form of fugue state, mm-hmm. and uh, because science fiction was kind of... Uh, inundated with aliens at this point because like star wars had already been released at this point right yeah so um what year not empire uh 78 i want to say 77 i know that yeah 77 okay i was i was off a little but um so star wars has already probably reached italy at this point i'm going to assume i think that's a fair assumption mm-hmm. um so Aliens are in the public unconscious at this point. Uh, reptilian aliens, because I think I think Trandoshans make an appearance in the first Star Wars movie, but I don't remember. Um, I hate the fact that I know what Trandoshans are. Is that what the um, Plocoon is? What's a Trandoshan? A Trandoshan is a... Trandoshans are uh, Bosk, for example. The the bounty hunter Bosk. Um, he's oh, on the I gotcha. Super Star Destroyer. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's two S's and a K, Bosk. Uh, yeah, so they existed. They're they're in the public unconscious in some way. It's in the zeitgeist. Um, I don't know. And then then like you layer on top of it, he's getting hypnotically regressed immediately after every single one of these sightings. It, it's kind of a it's kind of a recipe for nonsense to form. And not only that, but the fact that. Like, like there is the sightings of the UFOs and, and people are like, oh, this is the most compelling case ever because yada, yada, yada. And it's like, is it? Because, like, the fact that there were sightings of UFOs that night, it it doesn't necessarily indicate that this actually happened. Because it could l- literally just be survivorship bias in that this guy just ha- so happened to get lucky on that night where 52 people saw UFOs. Mm-hmm. Um, and happened to have a, a UFO sighting the same night. And there's millions of other people. There's there's thousands of other people who have UFO sightings and thousands of other people who have, who have been abducted in air quotes. Um, so this is, this is one of those things where it's like when people say uh, people are crazier on the night of a full moon, right? Or like hospitals are wild on the night of a full moon. It's literally because you recognize it you remember it because that event happened at the same time as the normal stuff that you're dealing with. That's like the whole point. It's, it's, it's the way the human mind is designed to remember things is it remembers details. And then it assigns value to details that don't necessarily need to have value assigned to them. It's like when, when streetlights go out and you think that streetlights always go out for you, the streetlights go out all the time. It's super common, right? Um, but you remember when it happens to you because it's an event that you don't always see. It's surprising. Um, and it, 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 it interacts with a part of our brain that creates memories and all that stuff. And they're, they're, this episode is at its, this episode is at, at its core about memory and how memory is a pliable thing and how our understanding of memory is so poor that it can create alien abductions i feel but that's just my personal uh my personal takeaway from this episode what do you think brandon i think streetlights never go out that's definitely wrong but okay (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what it is. He's either... It didn't happen. Like, there's nothing... There's there's no... Like, the fact of the matter is, he claims to have physical proof, but he hid it. Yeah. And that that's... Anytime someone says, I have the answer because I have physical proof, and then they don't show the physical proof off, that always... That always uh, smacks of much like me. the Olsen twins you never see them together and when you do it's just one moving back and forth very quickly I don't think that's how it works no that is how it works okay I saw it on John Oliver oh got it got it he's he's the bastion of all truth um so that's all I got for this episode uh if you enjoyed the episode be sure to follow us on our website Cryptopediacast.com, our Instagram at Cryptopediacast, our Twitter at Cryptopediacast. If you want to email us with monster requests, stories, or anything like that, uh, be sure to send that to Cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at Cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. I think you did it last week, so mm. I'll read off our, our jackalopes this week. Uh, we got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, and Bird Schneider. Thanks, guys, for supporting us. Um, I tried to do another light one this week because the, the world is a little bit weird. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you listen to us on. Uh, and yeah, that's that's our general, our usual general plugs. Mm-hmm. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. Our website. Well, my website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon, capital C, capital B. My Instagram is at mu2067. My Twitter, which is increasingly uh, angry, is uh, at jfdunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And uh, my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. Sorry, I was just trying to look at his Instagram to see what he did recently. Um, at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird.